All right, welcome back. If you're new to the area, Mondays we get to have Dr. John Bentley on the show. He answers your pet questions. Uh, we have a phone number which we popped up during the break, and uh, we have one question that we'd like to get to. Hi, Dr. Bentley. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina wants to know, here's her question. I have two cats with skin problems, one of which is so bad she is losing her hair. What are some foods to help? Actually, in most cases, 90% of cases in cats, even mm -hmm. though you're not seeing them, problems fleas. Um, and uh, probably the best thing you can do for mm -hmm. cats with, that are losing their hair due to itching or scratching, or even if they're just, just looking at them and their hair's falling out, um, is make sure they're on a really good flea control program. Other than that, there aren't any really good foods that are going to help not lose hair. Mm -hmm. You can uh, get the foods that have the omega-3 fatty acids and that sort of stuff. It'll make the hair they have look a lot better. No, no kidding, it will. It, it will uh, make their hair good and slick and glossy, but mm -hmm. to prevent the hair from falling out, um, that's usually due to the cat scratching it out. Well, there are some endocrine problems, thyroid and and adrenal problems that can cause your hair to fall out, mm -hmm. but those are fairly rare in cats. When it comes to medication, how do you not get so overwhelmed with all the options? And let's be honest, people see the commercials and they're like, well, I can be a doctor. Clearly my cat or dog needs this. Yeah, well, th my old dermatologist used to tell me that, um, not my dermatologist, <laughs> but the dermatology professor at Auburn uh -huh. used to tell me that the skin can only look about eight different ways. And there's lots of different diseases, way more than eight. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, everything tends to look like everything else. It's very difficult to look at a skin problem and say, oh, that's what it's got. You just kind of have to go with the averages. And this okay. is what the most likely thing is because that's when you have your practice, you know that that's the most common thing that walks in the door. But that doesn't mean that's what it is. Statistics go right out the window when you're talking about an individual. So each case is its own case, uh, yes, if you is. will. Uh, I said I would ask you about this. In Texas, I mean, it was unbelievable to look at the aerial shots and all the flooding and all the cows just mm -hmm. walking. I mean, as a vet, you don't know what's going to walk through your door. No, not a cow. <laughs> I know hey, that. Hey. That I do know. You never know. People I don't, it, it would be area. malpractice for me to look at a large animal, much less touch it. So. I am, I am totally not really? up to date on large animals. Okay, stuff. it's good to know your strength and good to know That's your That's right. <laughs> but when you look at that, what runs through your mind as a vet? Well, most of it is that uh, you got to remember that at least most places in Texas, the, the grasslands are very sparse and they're very, very spread out. So what for us would be able to, you know, you'd be able to sustain that many cattle on a very small area of land because we have so much grass. Out there, it's hundreds and hundreds of acres. So not being able to round up all the cattle is pretty common. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have a quick break. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bentley. There's your number and address as well. We uh, will be back with more after this.